Introduction Fieldwork is the study of people and their culture in their natural habitat. Anthropological fieldwork has been characterized by the prolonged residence of the investigator, her, his participation in an observation of the society, and her, his attempt to understand the inside view of the native people and to achieve the holistic view of a social scientist, 2007. A society can be, said to provide a ready-made laboratory for the social scientist. This unit will provide how fieldwork started in anthropology and how it developed into an intrinsic part of the subject. 1.2 Approaches to Fieldwork Fieldwork is intrinsic to the lives of sociocultural anthropologists and equally for physical and archaeological anthropologists though for different concerns. It is something that stays with them for their entire career for the extraordinary experience it provides. It is a period where every time research is to be conducted empirically, one has to devote at least a year if not less and extend it to as many years as may be required to gather satisfactory findings. In the past such involvement led to total isolation from the researcher's own life and accepted the unfamiliar and unknown setting as her, his own. Fieldwork tradition in the beginning, anthropologists depended on accounts written by traders, travelers, missionaries and administrators. They used these materials for producing grand theories. In the later stages, anthropologists started sending questionnaires for collecting information on areas of their specific interests. Dissatisfaction with the inadequacies of such material made anthropologists undertake field visits to collect their own data. Initially they undertook field trips as part of interdisciplinary teams like Torres Straits Expedition, but gradually individual fieldwork became a trend. Milanowski's fieldwork among Trobri and Islanders can be seen as a landmark in fieldwork tradition in anthropology. At the beginning of the 19th century interest for field studies arose both to understand the evolution of humans as also to know how contemporary exotic humans of unknown places existed. This also arose because of Europe's expansion on lands which they made into colonies. The waning cultures of Native American tribes also intensified the interest to know about others. During this time, this new anthropological methodology was not without its flaws. The data instead of being collected by anthropologists from the field themselves were actually gathered by missionaries, travelers, traders, colonial administrators, etc. during their visits to such locales. This meant that the anthropologists in reality read these accounts and gave their own interpretation. Thus anthropologists of that period came to be known as armchair anthropologists as they did their inquiry from the comfort of the libraries or studies instead of actually venturing into the real field. Such a celebrated anthropologist was James Fraser whose work on religion and myth was completely based on secondary sources of information. It was only towards the end of the 19th century did anthropologists start visiting the field to conduct pragmatic field studies. Major anthropological fieldwork of that time was conducted by the Americans and the British, though the Germans and the French cannot be ignored. France Spurs in America and Alfred C. Haddon in Britain conducted quite notable expeditions of that time in British Columbia and in Torres Strait respectively. Their main intention was to expand their knowledge to a level where understanding of human beings became more fertile. We cannot deny the importance of fieldwork in the study of anthropology. It is in fact the most pertinent device in the existence of anthropology as a subject. Along with fieldwork, the method of participant observation which bore out as a consequence of it is equally essential in anthropological inquiry. This method was made prominent by the famous anthropologist, Brynislo Malinowski who made abundant contributions to the development of the subject, including the theory on functionalism. He may have not been the first to make use of the participant observation method. But the way he used it, with a combination of using local linguistic expertise, the way he described it in his most celebrated work, Argonauts of the Western Pacific, 1922, etc. made it the most used method for many years in anthropology. America saw proper ethnographic fieldwork in the investigations of Franz Boas and his students. However their studies were not the kind advocated by the British, more particularly by Malinowski. They mostly believed in short fieldworks with breaks in between. Ruth Benedict who was one of Boer's student and known for her work on culture and personality was one who conducted fieldwork in his style. Another student of Boer's, Margaret Mead, known for her work in Samoa, however conducted her fieldwork in the British style. It was only from the 1940s did the Americans started conducting long intensive field studies. 
In France, anthropologists like Levi Strauss were more interested in oral and textual traditions, than in fieldwork experiences of the ethnographer. However fieldwork tradition became popular in other Western European countries and also outside Europe and United States. Fieldwork involves, besides the use of participant observation, the building up of rapport and friendly links with the people they intend to study. They should observe intently and listen attentively to everything around any. But at the same time they should be cautious enough to not disturb the regular course of life. Once the respondents become comfortable with the reason then one can start making use of other methods like conversing, interviewing, photographing, collecting statistical data to gather more information. But this information collected should be understood without any biasness. The way of traditionally, recording material collected is by documenting it in a notebook. Even after coming back from the field to one's temporary dwelling in or near the field, one must note down the day's events and experiences. Such a field note or a field diary is a must for researchers as it helps immensely in creating a good ethnography. In fact the way field work is conducted in anthropology is unique and clearly differentiates it from sociology, which in many other matters exhibit similarities. Archer's presence, the way field work has been conducted from the time it started in anthropology, it had to question and re-question itself about the issues of methodology and ethics. As field work is taken to be a method, it is expected that it will be followed in a particular specialized way. However field work may lead to situations about which a field guide may not have instructions about. Teachers and supervisors might not be able to prepare a student about to go to the field fully. One has to finally depend on one's instinct and intellect to conduct field work fruitfully, and at the same time be sensitive towards the people studied. A course on fieldwork and methodology was not present for many years in universities. A student was expected to go through with it as part of her, his initiation to the subject completely. Beginning the fieldwork the anthropologist chooses the geographical and cultural area for his field project, studies the literature, and, if the language has been recorded, learns as much of it as possible before going into the field. Today, he will most likely also be interested in, a specific problem and in social or culture theory, and he will endeavor to be au courant with the literature. For the first couple of months or more, the field worker proceeds with care so as not to hurt anybody's sensitivities. To receive complete acceptance from the people studied, one has to advance most diligently and try to learn about the native dos, customs and decorum, and don'ts, taboos, and bans. If there are times when one is in a situation where one is not aware about what is the expected behavior, then one should maintain as much politeness as possible and learn about it without creating any commotion. These things cannot be taught and one has to devise one's own mechanisms to obtain acceptance. Once rapport is built with the people and also after the researcher has come to terms with his apprehensions and the existing scenario, he can now start building on his proposed work routine. The tasks to be taken up at the beginning of field work should be preferably impersonal. One must at this stage try to learn the native language as communicating in the language of the group studied helps in building a sense of camaraderie, which in turn helps in the collection of data, but it is of course easier said than done, as complexities in language may differ from place to place and also a researcher's learning capabilities may vary from person to person. Hence it is more important to grasp those words or sentences that may further one's research rather than waste time in learning the entire language. To create a census is the next essential task. Both learning the language and making the census can go hand in hand. The census helps in knowing who inhabits which space and also the composition of each household. It also helps to get acquainted with the people living in the households. This movement of collecting census from one household to the other builds up the roles of participation and observing. The field worker observes and jots down everything that catches her, his eye though not realizing its significance at that time. The field worker slowly starts involving herself, himself in the daily affairs of the community studied or observes lengthy rituals related to marriage, death, initiation etc. As he watches intently as the people go about their activities pertaining to cultivating crops, fishing, cooking, etc. As he listens to conversations and local gossip carefully in order to pick up valuable clues related to her, his work. Here taking field notes help as later during the time of classification and analysis, these notes provide the field worker with valuable information. 
the participation of the field worker in different situations would vary from one community to the other and also from one investigator to the other. Evans Pritchard, 1940, while studying the Nyoi hardly had any time to himself. His camp was always surrounded by the native visitors whom he describes as persistent and tireless. We find that some anthropologists like to be a part of ritualistic performances, feasts and other social events. There are others who observe from afar and simply take notes. In whatever way a field worker gets involved, some friendships do form between her, him and some people in the community. These people are vital in creating a position for the field worker in the field and they also help in generating the most beneficial information. These may be anyone from the local doctor to the local priest. Once the field worker has progressed in managing the above discussed issues, s, he can now concentrate on basic problems of anthropology, like studying kinship system, marriage, family type, residence, economy, religious and political organizations, witchcraft, magical practices and all other ways of life of the community which the field worker finds significant and interesting enough to study. s. He starts inquiring through means of structured and unstructured interviews and checks the validity of the answers through the actual behavior observed. It is but obvious that, some inconsistency remains between what is ideal and what is practiced. Oscar Lewis, 1961, suggests the use of tape recorders to conduct long interviews with various members of the community as it allows the delivering of a better humanistic account of events. It is the nuances and pauses in everyday discussion that can be caught on tape which gives more meaning to the information collected. Powder Maker, 1962, had inter-African conversations recorded by an African assistant, which showed unprompted tones of emotions and subtleties of African life. The field worker should always be ready for events which are unexpected or chance occurrences. For example, a quarrel, an elopement, a premature delivery etc. expose newer facets of a culture which furthers the investigation. The field worker, should see to it that whichever avatar s, he is playing, either that of an interviewer or an observer, or a listener, the level of communication with the people should always be reciprocal. The field worker should be aware all the time that s, he is in the field to collect data and hence even though s, he needs to be involved with the community studied, s, he should also know where to draw the line and be detached. If one is an expert in playing this dual role with ease then one can easily conduct one's investigation without creating unnecessary emotional complications. It is sometimes said that a high degree of involvement in the field might make scientific objectivity take a back seat. This is not true. As long as the field worker is able to detach herself, himself whenever necessary and is aware of her, his responsibilities, both detachment and involvement can go hand in hand. This ambiguous nature of the field worker actually allows her, him to maintain normalcy. While conducting field work, the field worker is always aware of her, his theoretical focus. Aspects of functionalism, structuralism, feminism, post-structuralism, post-modernism, Marxism, etc., are used together or alone to construct points of reference. These theories on their own or in groups guide the field worker's choice of problems, the techniques s, he uses, the hypothesis and the kind of date to s, he accumulates and the way it is finally interpreted. Data collection and use of theories may not be considered as separate processes because while the field worker is collecting data, at the same time s, he is also thinking about what hypothesis to apply, how the data is to be compared and what theories can define her, his work. It is necessary to keep in mind that using a hypothesis and collecting empirical data are done separately while in the field but both are to be connected later as hypothesis will be tested on the basis of the data collected. However negative or positive data may be as far as hypothesis is concerned, it is the demand of scientific standards that honesty be retained. It is possible that different interpretations can be given on the same data. A noteworthy honest representation is Cora Du Bois's study of the Allories. 1944. Fieldwork has seen many changes from the time it began. It now do not ideally follows the route showed by Malinowski where in an apparently homogeneous setting, with territorial and cultural boundaries, the field worker had to spend many years doing intensive fieldwork with the help of participant observation. The end of World War II and the decline of colonies on the one hand and the development of anthropology in university circles on the other, 
made the access and huge funds for long trips to distant places made it an unreasonable objective to attain for the new generation of students. Rather the students now turned their attention to studying new or inviting ideas and realities near or within their own societies. The new leanings in anthropological research have shifted from holistic studies to more particular issues. The places of investigation are not necessarily isolated simple societies but complex urban societies. New methods along with, the traditional participation observation, interview, case study, genealogy, etc., are used. It has become imperative for the field worker to realize that while studying a society, s, he becomes a part of the condition explored. There are of course advantages too if a team studies complex and large societies. Clyde Clutchhon anthropologist and physician Dorothea Layton, who studied the Navajo, 1946, is a good example of a team from different disciplines. There is a great concern today about the use of sampling method. It is not as if anthropologists were not aware of it in the past. In any historical reconstruction of a population, to find a sample is almost next to impossible. However, in simple societies this task is not too hard as the population is usually small and the entire population can be included in the investigator's genealogical chart. From the chart, it was comparatively easy to ascertain the incidence of kinds of behavior without the use of any complicated statistical methods. Nowadays since anthropologists study large complex societies often, thus they employ assistants who are assigned to make a random survey either at the beginning of fieldwork to verify standards or at the end to authenticate or refute attributes.